Hello, my name is Priscilla and I'm the Children's Peace Formation Coordinator at Honored Peace. Today I'll be reading The People Shall Continue by Simon J. Ortiz and illustrated by Cheryl Graves. Many, many years ago, all things came to be. The stars, rocks, plants, rivers, animals, mountains, sun, moon, birds, all things and the people were born. Some say from the ocean, some say from a hollow log, some say from an opening in the ground, some say from the mountains, and the people came to live. In the northern mountains, and on the plains, in the western hills, and on the sea coast, in the southern deserts, and in the canyons, in the eastern woodlands, and on the Piedmonts. Some people fished, others were hunters. Some people farmed, others were artisans. Their leaders were those who served the people. Their healers were those who cared for the people. Their hunters were those who provided for the people. Their warriors were those who protected the people. The teachers and the elders of the people all taught this important knowledge. The earth is the source of all life. She gives birth. Her children continue the life of the earth. The people must be responsible to her. This is the way that all life continues. The people of the many nations visited each other's lands. The people from the north brought elk meat. The people from the west gave them fish. The people from the south brought corn. The people from the east gave them hides. When there were arguments, their leaders would say, let us respect each other. We will bring you corn and baskets. You will bring us meat and flint knives. That way we will live a peaceful life. We must respect each other and the animals, the plants, the land, the universe. We have much to learn from all the nations. Nevertheless, Life was always hard. At times, corn did not grow and there was famine. At times, winters were very cold and there was hardship. At times, the winds blew hot and rivers dried. At times, the people grew uneasy among themselves. The learned men and women talked with each other about what to do for their people, but it was always hard. They had to have great patience and they told their people we should not ever take anything for granted. In order for our life to continue, we must struggle very hard for it. But one day, something unusual began to happen. Maybe there was a small change in the wind. Maybe there was a shift in the stars. Maybe it was a dream that someone dreamed. Maybe it was the strange behavior of an animal. The people thought and remembered. A long time ago, there were men who came upon the ocean to the western coast. The people thought and remembered. A long time ago, there were red-haired men who came upon the ocean to the eastern coast. But these visitors had not stayed for long. They met with some of the people and soon they left upon the ocean for their homes. But now, people began to hear fearful stories. Strange men had arrived on the shores of the south, Spanish, these men called themselves. They came seeking treasures and slaves. These men caused destruction among the people. The nations of the south were burned by heedless and forceful men. Soon, there were other dreadful stories. More men, these with their wives and children arrived on the eastern coast. English, French, Dutch, they called themselves. They spoke with a fervor that frightened the people who met with them. They taught about a God whom all should obey. They said they were special men of this God. Soon the people saw the destruction of their nations. They soon found out it was the aim of the English, French, and Dutch to take their lands. The rich and the powerful of these men formed an American government. They wanted the land because it was fertile, with forest and farmland, 
and wealthy with precious minerals, and they wanted the people to serve them as slaves. When the people saw these men did not respect them and the land, they said, we must fight to protect ourselves in the land. In the west, Pope called warriors from the Pueblo and Apache nations. In the east, Timuxe gathered the Shawnee and the nations of the Great Lakes, the Appalachians and the Ohio Valley to fight for their people. In the midwest, Black Hawk fought to save the Sook and Fox Nation. In the Great Plains, Crazy Horse led the Sioux in the struggle to keep their land. Osillo in the southeast, Geronimo in the southwest, Chief Joseph in the northwest, Sitting Bull, Captain Jack, all were warriors. They were warriors who resisted and fought to keep the American colonial power from taking their lands. From the 1500s to the late years of the 1800s, the people fought for their lives and lands. In battle after battle, they fought until they grew weak. Their food supplies were gone and their warriors were killed or imprisoned. And then the people began to settle for agreements with the American government. The leaders of the people agreed to treaties. The people said they would stop their armed fight. The Americans promised the people they could live on land they both agreed was the people's land. Upon this land, the people could hunt and fish and have their sacred ceremonies. Upon this land, the nations of the people could live. The people thought, the earth is the source of all life. They knew they must have the courage to continue. The people promised to honor the treaties. The people had to agree to live on reservations. Much of the reservation land was very poor. There were no more buffalo to hunt, and the deer and elk were scarce. Many of the people ran away, and they were forced back by the Americans. The nations of the people were weakened. They were broken in united strength. Soon, more Americans came. They were gold miners, railroad men, outlaws, missionaries, ranchers. They wanted the rest of the land the people had. Treaties were broken by them, and the reservations grew even smaller. The Americans sent government agents. They told the people they could not live the way they had before. The missionaries asked the government to put a stop to the sacred ceremonies, the dances, and the songs of the people. The government agents gathered the children. They took the children to boarding schools far from their homes and families. The children from the west were taken to the east. The children from the east were taken to the west. The people's children were scattered like leaves torn from a tree. At schools far from home, the children were taught to become Americans. They learned to be ashamed of their people. The people went to schools. They went to Christian churches. They served in the American army some even almost became Americans, but they were still the people. They farmed and raised livestock. They made and sold crafts for a living. Nevertheless, the people were very poor. There were no jobs on the reservations, even though they didn't want to. Many of the people had to leave. They were moved by the government into the cities across America. Oakland, Cleveland, Chicago, Dallas, Denver, Phoenix, Los Angeles. They worked in factories, on railroads, and businesses, even for the government. Often they were discouraged and their families suffered in the cities. They struggled hard for their lives. All across America, the nations of the people were talking. The Cheyennes in the cities and the Navajos in the country, the Seminoles in Los Angeles and the Cherokees in Oklahoma the Chippewa in Red Lake, and the Sioux in Denver. Everywhere the people on the reservations, in small towns, in the large cities, they were talking and they were listening. They were listening to the words of the elder people who were speaking. This is the life that includes you. This is the land that is yours. All these things that were pushed away from us and broken by the American powers and government, they are alive and we must keep them alive. All these things will help us to continue. 
Once again, the people realized what was happening to the land. They realized it was the powerful forces of the rich and the government that made the people suffer. The people looked around them and they saw black people, Latino people, Asian people, many white people and others who were kept poor by American wealth and power. The people saw that these people who were not rich and powerful shared a common life with them. The people realized they must share their history with them. We shall tell you of our struggles, they said. We are all the people of this land. We were created out of the forces of earth and sky, the stars and water. We must make sure that the balance of the earth be kept. There is no other way. We must struggle for our lives. We must take great care with each other. We must share our concern with each other. Nothing is separate from us. We are all one body of people. We must struggle to share our human lives with each other. We must fight against those forces which will take our humanity from us. We must ensure that life continues. We must be responsible to that life, but that humanity and the strength which comes from our shared responsibility. For this life, the people shall continue. The end. How did the people's message make you feel? Please share in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed reading the story with me. Until next time, goodbye.